everybody. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book. I'm talking really slow while Instagram slowly connects. Sunday Tea Book. Anyway, forget about Instagram. We never really treat Network them very well. Unavailable uh, Instagram. Video. You lose, guys. Welcome back, YouTube, to Sunday Tea Book episode 42. Uh, we are rocking and rolling mm -hmm. through the documents here. I was actually, we were working on this one, this episode just yesterday, and I looked ahead and we are within sight of the end of this document. So it's time to think, it's time for you guys to start and think about what could be next. Hello, Lolo. Hello, Simrajit. Hello, Josh. Hello, everybody in YouTube land. Igor. Hey. Igor, um, I'm just... Uh, I'm just going to take the cell phone away. Yes, so Instagram... It darn it. Instagram's not going to work today. That's fine by me. I don't have to try and talk to two groups at once. That's perfect. I'm totally focused on you. We haven't done any random live work yet, I feel. I was going to mention that. Ah. I was going to mention that. I'm going <laughs> to get my book ready. Okay. All right. I'm going to get my book ready a little bit because I've got... Of course, as usual, we have tea trivia time coming up shortly, so don't... Leave until you at least get to play and participate in tea trivia. Super fun. Cindy, welcome. Good to see you. Hey. Yes. You missed a couple for the last couple of weeks and that's totally fine. I hope you had a great time with your mom. I think that's where she was, right? I think so. Yeah, so hopefully you had a great time up there. Hey, Mac McMillan. Ni hao. Uh, ni hao. And welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 42. All right, guys, let's dive in so we can get on with drinking some tea. I'm going to start brewing because I'm We're going to start thirsty. brewing our tea. If you didn't see the pre roll, Tian Liang Cha. This is an epic tea. And if you read the description on our website, I think I explain how this tea snuck up on me. Mm. Uh, at my first tasting of this tea was some time ago now, but I'll never forget it. I was kind of uh, confused. I was like, well, wow, what's going on with this tea? It's a little bit weird. It's not really doing much. Like it just didn't hit me. And I realized on the second and subsequent tastings, it slowly became, maybe not so slowly, but it wasn't instantly like in my face. Oh my God, I love this tea. I feel like you had, in, the first time you had that was the instant uh, disappointment a little bit. Because we haven't had like oolong black and those kind of teas for Bold, a while. Flavorful, ex siang, expecting aromatic. Expecting something that is uh, in that kind of high profile and mm -hmm. uh, just different. But this is a really... Uh, and even in the dark tea, right? You've right. got Shen Puar, Shu Puar, Liu Bao Cha, Tian Jian I had been having. Oh, They're all right, pretty right. bold too. So it, right. it comes in at a different angle. Mm. This Med is more like a meditative tea. Meditative. Mm. Calming. Yes. Soothing. Wonderful tea. I love this tea. And extremely long lasting. I'm telling you this break we're going to drink for today and tomorrow. Right? Probably. If, you, if you are a value seeker in tea and you like the concept of a meditative, calming, soothing, sort of zen, post-yoga, post this tea would crush it. I'm telling you. It's amazing. Not only that, like Jen said, if you're a value seeker, you're going to get a lot of mileage out of this tea. And then when you're done with it in the in the gaiwan, you can boil it. It's an amazing tea. Okay. Mm. Did I misspeak? I think it's boilable. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm right. You can boil it. All right. Who, who else is here? <laughs> Max Schuller. Uh, guten Tag. I hope he's from Germany. I assume because he has the umlaut that he's from Germany, but that might ah. be wrong. So Max, let us know where you're from. Everybody, let us know two things. Optionally, you don't have to. What are you brewing? Where are you from? We love to know about those things. And while you do that, no church today. Oh, at Cindy. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I thought Cindy didn't go to church and my heart stopped. I bet you she already went. Anyway, <laughs> while you guys tell us what you're brewing and where you're all from, I'm going to tell you what Sunday Tea Book is all about. Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I sit down and we take a book, paper, or an article that is jam-packed with great information, but is very hard to access in the English language, or if it's translated, there's some confusion around it. Maybe the translation isn't great, or maybe there's just some subtleties. Why don't we just post the finished product on our website and be done with it? Because the process of going through it over the years, I've noticed how much more cultural information, how much more tea knowledge, how much more 
how much more interesting and fulfilling it is for me to go through the process of getting to the finished information that we decided to do this live with you guys uh, every Sunday and we've been doing it for 42 weeks straight. Ooh, yeah. All right, so that is what Sunday tea. I don't know. I'm just so stoked. I can't wait till it's 142. I can't by, wait till by it's the, 542. Yes, yeah, so why, why is it like 100? I'm going to clip every booyah you said and just 100 booyah. I'm going to make her, I'm gonna, and I'm going to make sure she does no, that. That's a lot of work. Because I want to make, make a song with that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you could use that sample as a thing. Mm, mm. All right. Uh, Igor agrees. Good for meditation. I drink yes. some before sleep. Yes, really great for that. Mm. Uh, and I did guess Max Schuler's location right. Germany. Oh. Nice. Cool. You stumped me this week. I don't have the tea you guys are drinking. I'm brewing a 2013 Fujuan. That's right up the right alley, Cindy. As always, perfect alignment. 42 yes. weeks. She's cheering for us too. <laughs> Josh, we saw your comment before we went live and we say the same thing. We cannot believe you were early this time. <laughs> yes, and Simmerjeet has given some hype for some tea trivia exactly. time. All right, and Josh, you asked a little bit about what should you brew? You should match us, okay? Mm. Cindy couldn't today, so we're counting on you, Josh. Don't let us down. Or <laughs> just kidding, I just think kidding. you mentioned food dry, so uh, did, several of you are having food dry. I think that's pretty nice. That's pretty that cool. That is all from the same. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Location. If you guys can share tasting notes too, right? Mm -hmm. So that's cool. All right. Devil's horn. I'm checking my notes to make sure I don't miss anything. I've got a wicked tea trivia time lined up for you guys. Mm. But uh, I'm waiting on uh, who else is drinking tea? Did we miss anybody? 2013 Fujiwara. Oh, that's nice. A nice old one. Mm. Mm. And uh, we had a 2017 cheese today in our in our omelet. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about it's age A little things. bit of far fetch. It's not far-fetched. It's exactly okay. what we did. It's, okay. it's not unrelated. That's what it's we did. It's also an aged product. You know, it's an aged product that increase, that improves with age. It was pretty good. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, I'm just trying to make stuff up because I'm not sure. It's not quite, I feel like it's not tea trivia time. I think you're supposed to talk about something. Oh, yeah, you talk about the document now. It was my hand off. You're right. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, again, I had a nap before. <laughs> You'd think Not we'd learn, right? You would think we'd learn. We don't learn. It always takes me a long time to wake up. Anyways, we continue today uh, uh, on the article T classification and in practice and theory by Professor Chen Chuan and translated by Michael Salt. Oh, you uh, remember? I couldn't yes, remember that. I was yes. drawing a total blank. Michael Salt, yes. librarian at Cambridge. Yes. And published in a French agricultural magazine back mm. in 1981. Um, I really enjoy reading this with you guys and uh, the pre-read with Phil because we can notice uh, first there's a, a English using habit different from English and North America mm -hmm. and uh, 70s and uh, 2020 time what? time frame time also epoch have that. Same, yes. I also feel that with uh, uh, Professor Chen Chuan's Chinese way of saying mm -hmm. it's also different than how we say Chinese data. there's a data yes mm -hmm. you not just the tone or something, the uh, grammar-ish no. little thing is something we don't use as much yeah, too. Yeah. Not juju dated, but <laughs> not ju -ju temporally <laughs> dated. Little yes. uh, Chinese fruit joke thrown in there <laughs> for you Chinese fruit lovers. And there's also, um, in terms of tea knowledge, there's also little changes in terms of uh, tea varieties and stuff. Uh, what I like about this uh, comparison and reading, especially uh, um, especially thinking of our older uh, reading material, China Tea Book, which had a really crappy China, oh, uh, yes. English translation, which make all the English speakers more uh, crappy. Oh, <laughs> it w it was it was. <laughs> I can't think of a better word, but it's just that's right. There we go. We tell it straight. You know, you here. know straight up, but that translation has problems. It was problem. rough. It was rough. And uh, you will be. <laughs> You will be more alert when you are reading. Well, in this article, you read that that's professional, Very that's formal. perfect English. Mm. Well, there's a still little thing Mostly that's perfect. lost in yes, mm. uh, that's lost in translation, or there's a little um, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, fly. It's okay. I took care of it. And uh, there's a little. What did I? What was I saying? <sighs> 
The uh, <laughs> translation is very good, such that you will be, you oh, know, if he. And again, yes. Mm. Besides the the, there's a loss in Chinese She's and back. English. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Chinese and English, uh, that uh, cultural language uh, thing missing in the translation. There's also uh, some T turns sometimes got translated and become uh, a little bit confusing. Or in today's case, we're going to read and he mentioned about the straight T. Probably nowadays, when we, at least for me, when I talk about straight T, I would think about, uh, you know, uh, not a bland right. or a yes. straight shape. But what he was talking about is Mao Cha. So mm. that's not quite a straight yeah. T. We wouldn't say that. Uh, yeah, today. we'll get there, but I don't think you would have got that without our help, frankly. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> All right, cool. So that is what we're that is the document we're diving into. This has been super interesting. I always like to encourage, I don't need to encourage the T nerds. You guys will mm. absolutely 100% love this document and the way we're going through it. Uh, you will just it'll just make your day. And if you're, but if you're not a teen nerd, I want to encourage you that although it is pretty nerdy and we're diving into sort of, it is pretty nerdy because we're diving into the birth of the six categories, there are many, many nuggets of information that are gold, tips, tricks, ways, not so many tips and tricks, ways to understand tea that you can take away easily. They're easy to understand and they're and they're, bro they're pretty safe to broadly apply, which I think is great. Um, I notice a lot of the way we look at tea is, is echoed. No, was it comes from, I can't say echoed. We didn't, he's not following us. We are following his scientific way of, uh, his scientific mode of systematically categorizing tea mm -hmm. is proving to be really effective because it's worked for new teas. It's worked mm -hmm. over and over. So anyway, we'll get into that. You'll see it. Um, and I just want to add that mm. uh, uh, you don't have to learn about tea to enjoy tea. That's 100%. two things. It's more Great of a hobby, a hobby thing that we love to do. And That's some right. of you guys enjoy uh, learning about tea, but it has it doesn't uh, you not know, a prerequisite to enjoy you from. good tea. That's right. right. And also, we're not criticizing the translation, as we're doing this work, oh, yeah. we appreciate all the translators work and not uh, to, yes. you know, really share with the West what's uh, in Chinese, despite uh, there's a little yes. issues. It's just the more, uh, it's just help us all learn a little bit. The continued express. pursuit of knowledge, yes. just to make those subtle improvements. The undertaking that Michael Salt, the translator did, took here is massive and he did a great job, mm. great job. So it's just, an, what we're doing is an incremental improvement mm. just to clear a little bit of that haze that's left over. Mm -hmm. mm. Great points, great points. I think it's time for a sip. Tea trivia is coming, hold your horses. I'm gonna have a sip of tea first, okay? Because it's intense. Once I'm into tea trivia, I practically, I'm like an auction caller, okay? I gotta just talk, 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 talk. Okay, so I wanna have a sip of tea first, so. Josh, I think you should go with the Fujuan if it's not too late. I noticed he said uh, he doesn't have uh, Qianliang Cha per se, so he's got Fujian. He said Fujian, which is cool. I had a little chuckle. That's kind of cool. Huh? Fujuan. I think he means oh, Fujuan okay. and Qian and uh, oh, and he says Qianliang. So now I'm confused. Is it Qianjian or Qianliang? I have Fujian and Qian. We're having Qianliang Cha if you have that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, Fujuan is approved as well, Josh. Okay. And anything else? No. No, just kidding. Have whatever you want. I'm just teasing you. Um, I have to say, when I see the liquor color of this, I first saw it. Yo, I was talking too much. I forgot it's a long brew. But when I sip it, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really good. But it's uh, it, this. If I just looked at, I believe I just looked at the mm. notes on the website, and this has darkened. This was more of a yellow, yeah. a yellow gold. It's it's aging a little bit, and yeah. it's aging wonderfully. Jump on the website and grab some now, okay? Because you know what happens when it ages nicely. <laughs> do, do, do. Hint. Okay, you gotta tune into these live casts for pro tips like that, folks. All right, somebody's got a Wu Yi Da Hong Pao. Max Schuler has a Wu Yi Da Hong Pao. Lovely, okay? I had a nice Rogoi. Ro Rogoi. <laughs> I had a nice Rogoi last night, partner. I sound like those old American movies, right? Rogoi. 
Um, no Tianliang. Okay, no Tianliang. So go with the Fujuan. I think you said you had a Fujuan, but I'm totally, <gasps> honestly, Josh, I'm totally confused about what's in your, what's in your tea closet right now. Okay. Oriental Beauty. Uh, Lolo's having an Oriental Beauty. That sounds divine. Let us know your tasting notes. Share them with uh, the folks on the chat too. We love to see you guys chatting and sharing your notes, especially if you do go with the Fujuan. Oh, looks like Josh started Josh something. Josh have that. And take the exotic woods on the sides of the palette. Right? Whoa. Oh, I missed that. Do that AGU was smooth, but tastes uh, so much like HR. Wow. Lots of. Oh, mushroom earthy, but super smooth because it's an extremely butt heavy cake. Oh, mm. okay. Okay. A lot of antique exotic woods on the sides. And I like his uh, lots of petrichor. We love that word too. Folks, uh, and there's a lot of you, and thank right. you guys for tuning in who are second language. Okay, that is uh, awesome. We love to have you. So um, this is just, if you don't know what petrichor is, I'll save you the Google, because I love this word. It's the smell. I learned that word last year. Mm. It's the smell of fresh rain on the dirt. Mm. And it's a it's, great tea, tea word. Okay? Yes, and As it's Josh a, just a great word. If I didn't know that word, I would use a really long phrase yeah, to fresh, describe that. You, the smell of fresh rain on dirt or petrichor. Oh my gosh, isn't that succinct? Um, Cindy says, Josh, I love that word petrichor. I never really heard or used it much before getting into tea. Mm. Yeah, I think we love fancy words when we drink tea. I don't know why. Um, more, okay, I'm, oh, uh, Mac McMillan is changing to uh, Formosa Red Assam. Red Assamica? Oh. So a Taiwanese Red Assamica, I think that means. Mm. Cool. Yes. Holy anticipation! Time Signature, I think, is getting ready, getting warmed up, getting stoked for tea trivia time. It's coming. Mm. Yeah. I forgot to give my uh, notes on my tea. Everybody's... Cindy want to have a look at my teapot. Could you please change it? Oh, I well, can change the camera. I can do that here. Here we go. We'll Let's see. go here. Okay. I will wear a red... This is actually... Red. I need to correct her slightly. This is actually my teapot. Not that we're overly possessive in the... Uh, yes, we are. In the Rushworth Lou household. I'm not going to use this cup. I will get in big trouble if I use this cup. And I bought this cup. She, only if we're having tea together. So. She's welcome to use it when I'm not using it. So this is my... This is normally my shampoo, my shampoo pot. My shampoo mm -hmm. teapot. But I decided to go a little crazy today and use it for Qianliang Cha because I wanted to illustrate that... This it, is so ugly. <laughs> I love this teapot. She thinks it's ugly. I think it's amazing. I bought this teapot and I abandoned it because this is a Duanyi teapot. Mm, you, but you wouldn't know it. <laughs> Sorry. Because yes. it's so dark. Because the the... First, at that time, not uh, it's very not very not popular to find a duanyi teapot, and I want a duanyi and a bamboo shape, so that's the only one I found. Okay, several days in uh, uh, Yixing. It's just the end size. This is the smallest I could find. It's, it's gigantic. Big. It's, it's gigantic. really big. Yeah. I do, a lot of teapot now, uh, at least in China, they start to go bigger and bigger and bigger because mm. the teapot is expensive. And people getting in is tend to think the bigger it is, the more worth the money. Yeah, that mentality so, is permeating the whole so world. So really hard to find a decent size. That's the only one I find, and it's not well made in terms of uh, firing. So the firing temperature wasn't quite there. So this we call tuhei, like this. It doesn't really affect like a. But we should say that that's not obvious when you first get when it. When you buy it, it's perfect. It's, it's you all wouldn't white. know till uh, use it. It become like so this. the liquor the liquor kind of let me say that it's the, the firing wasn't right and yeah. the liquor exposes that can I say that once yeah. it's filled with liquor and yeah, you, you, you know you give it that overnight uh, when you condition it you put the water in with a bit of leaf let it sit overnight boom hot water gave that uh, you got a funny looking teapot that yeah. I love I love it I call it my oh god I love this tea okay my ugly duckling teapot okay notes on the tea and then tea trivia guys I won't make you mm. wait anymore look at that liquor color look at it everybody. I'm staring at it too. Well, it's really okay. it's much mellower than I remember. Did you? The lid is a little bit minty. Mm. Oh, but why I used it for Tianliang Cha, I sort of let myself slide because I wanted to just 
prove, put my money where my mouth is. People ask, you know, do I have to use my teapot for a specific tea? And you can, and it's it's recommended because of the nature of the teapot and the yeasting, the porous picks up the, it'll pick up a slight, slight uh, nature of the tea that you consistently use with it. And that's, you know, kind of the, the perfect world scenario. But you know, you got to picture some, somebody with one teapot. Do they want to use one tea? You can use a tea type. You can go crazy and do whatever you want. It's your teapot. I always tell people. So I want to put my money where my mouth is and take a little left ang left turn, throw some Tian Yang Cha in my Shen Puer pot. And you notice I picked a tea. It's not like totally off the wall, right? It's pretty uh, related, you know? It's a lighter, dark tea, etc. Okay, so I wanted to get that off my chest. What, in your opinion, a good clay for fucha teapot? Igor is asking us, what, in our opinion, is a good clay for fucha teapot? I think I know how you're going to answer this. Here's what I think she might say. I think a good clay is a good teapot from a trusted vendor that your tea fits into, like go with the practical sort of things, I think, like does it go in easily? Um, that's my thought. Get something you like that works for you aesthetically, that works practically, and uh, I don't I know. I feel like you're asking clay for fu cha. So mm. if I get it right, you're asking about, oh, should I use juni or duan ni? If that's the case, or maybe Yixing or the other one. I don't know the other or one's Yixing name. Or Yixing or other one. Per, if that's the case, first personally, I'm a, I like Yixing. Uh, just when I use it, it's a pretty easy to use, and I can forget that for days, and I can keep drinking the tea. So I like it. Uh, but in terms of uh, clay, I know here are <clears throat> I hear a lot of uh, talk about you have to match the clay to. Uh, tea and stuff and uh, my opinion on that is not necessarily Puppy there's cock. no strict uh, it's really not as important as people were talking about mm. um, again you can try that yourself uh, side by side uh, sometimes it's mm. about uh, fire oh, you're talking about stuff. the flavor differences yes. In, yeah, yeah yes a lot of time people talk about how a uh, hugely different the taste of the tea and the clay could be, but um, I don't think so. A well-made uh, uh, yixing teapot is within a certain range, and that range is a huge impact on the taste. It's not as huge as when people talk about it. Yeah. As in, and at least in this interesting thing, those things I don't hear as much in China. Um, mm. I'm writing on the next uh, Yixing uh, video, which I will bring this up and uh, also... Uh, I should clarify too, you don't hear much about this teapot to tea thing in China from expert tea tasters, mm. right? And we're talking, you know, did yeah. it rain when the tea was plucked category tea tasters, you know, no nonsense. Mm, not as much like that, people. not much, it's mostly selecting and uh, mm. just wanted to talk about because I was uh, writing about that part about real and fake. I got a lot of questions about the teapot real and fake. Mm. Another question mm. that in China we talk about real or fake is talking about uh, like masterpiece. Talk about, oh yes, the painting real or fake means is that from say Van Gogh or not, or counterfeit. Not say is that a real painting or not painting. In mm. this case, I found in the West, people are concerned about is that Yixing teapot, Yixing clay or not. Well, in China, when we say real or fake, it's talking about um, who made it. So right. there's a lot of a gap. It's at an art, an the, art appreciation level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, stay tuned. Yeah, stay it might tuned take for a little while. I'm super slow when yeah. writing those. And we do have a few others coming first, so definitely stay tuned. I hope you saw it in the pre-roll. I showed some of the recent videos. We got a new one that dropped just two days ago, three days, I don't know, two days ago, I think. Um, really fun one, check that out. Um, green tea and me and our, our relationship. So I won't talk more about that, but the video is out there. So uh, don't worry, Cindy, about the teapot. How could you know? It's okay, but now <laughs> we've got that cleared up. Mac, Mac McMillan, yes, from Taiwan, the tea, the Formosa. 
I'm gonna just gonna I'm gonna wrap up the comments. We're gonna head into tea trivia time. I feel like we're so chatty today. Yeah, Time Signature likes glass teapots, so I can see the liquor color. Yes, I like that love too. that too. So pretty. And each tea has something different to offer in terms of their beauty as they unroll. Green tea versus uh, oolong or black tea, all have their different elements. Uh, young, <laughs> Josh says what? That's so funny. My first ever yixing was a duani. It has beautiful amber, young patina now. Young to like uh, worked mm. so rubbed when you rub the teapot it'll get a luster over time which is really beautiful yeah and um, not high it sounds a little bit damped mm. yeah you can hear the firing temp was not high it sounds a little bit damped teapot also were you saying Phil that Tianjin or Fujian is close to Qiangyang Cha close enough for us. And Fujuan is the good one in the sense that they're dark teas, right? And we're in a dark tea vibe, so at least we're in the same vibe. And Cindy's having Fujuan, I think she said too. So then if you're on the Fujuan thing, you guys can trade tasting notes. She's mm. having that 20 aged Fujuan, I think she said 2013. 2013, yeah. yeah. 17 is 17 the cheese. 17 is the cheese, 13 is the Fujuan. <laughs> got it. You got it. I wish I could show you the color of this Formosa Renaissance. Mm. Hey, mm. you can. That's a great segue. Let me pump over here. Jump onto our Discord link down below. Throw a picture up in the teapot section, or in the in the tea, in the what are you drinking section. Okay, that would be awesome. We'd love to see the color of your Formosa Red Assam. If you're into Discord, there's a little link down below. Follow the instructions. If you're not, hit us on our socials. You know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you're into any of those, and if you're not into any of that stuff at all, maybe next time we'll see it. Sorry, I don't know what else to offer. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but hopefully one of those will work for you. But thanks for the, um, the spirit of sharing. We'd love to see the, all your different liquor colors. So jump on the Discord and share those with us. I mm. think there's Yixing, Yixing, Yangsu, Rongchang, Ninjing. Or perhaps, I'm just going fast. The last one is Chaozhou. Can't remember. Whoa, so many. Simmerjeet is, is now demanding tea trivia time. I feel like the nature of his exclamation mark has changed from one of uh, anticipated excitement to, hey, let's get on with it. No, <laughs> no more goofing around, guys. It is, it is, let me make sure I get this right. Tea. Oh, darn, I didn't get it right. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Successfully connected. Yeah, yeah, I'm not there yet. Okay, let me just try that again. Okay, guys, bear with me, bear with me. You'd think I'd be really good at this by now. No, <laughs> no. Okay, I'm back. Don't worry, guys, here it comes. I'm going to do things in the right order. First, oh, I can't fix that when I'm not on the page, though. I got to go back and fix it first. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's just do it. Stop goofing around. Okay, it's not going to be perfect, but guess what? It's going to be good enough, okay? Uh, just give me a minute to make the little noise for the intro. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. That's your. Uh, I don't want the countdown. I want to have the. Oh, it's supposed to be there. Oh, that's the sound. So complicated. Here we go. T <laughs> trivia time. <laughs> Woo! I did it. Oh my god! It's so hard to be a producer and a host. Shout out to everybody who does this all the time. All right, guys. In four, three, two, one. Here we go with T trivia. I'll catch up as I go. I got lots to talk about during this tea trivia about some of my favorite things on the interwebs. But first, with our first question. <laughs> Aroma is detected when breathing out, for example, for example, after a delightful sip of tea are known as, is it one, retronasal olfaction? Is it two, orthonasal olfaction? Is it three, hypopnea? Or is it four, nothing? Those are all in your head. There's no smells when you breathe out. <laughs> All right, guys, that's question one. It is about aromas detected when breathing out. This question and a couple of the other ones are inspired by Tea Science Tuesday. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a YouTube slash Instagram live that I don't know if it's going on right now at the time, but there's a little, there's a group of videos on YouTube by Eric Scott, and they're fantastic if you're into the science of tea. He is the real deal. He's a PhD. He did a, anyway, he's the real deal. <laughs> and he covers really interesting tea topics from the perspective of science. And this was inspired by his channel. So just type in the number, hit enter, and the computer will sum it up. You've still got a little bit of time to get your answer in. What are aromas detected when breathing out known as? I'm not going to read them all because I think I'm out of time. Lots of people are guessing retronasal olfaction. You guys did really great. A few of you guessed orthonasal olfaction. Orthonasal olfaction is when you breathe in straight, ortho straight in 
and that's your oh i have a picture for this let me see if i can find it in time i oh i'm so uh so much stuff i didn't have here we go so there's the whole thing about retronasal and orthonasal olfaction. You see the little things hang down from your brain to pick up the smells and when it comes straight in your nose, it's ortho. When it comes in your mouth, comes around the back and to the front, retro. Next question. EGCG stands for, is it one? Epigallocatechin gallate? Is it two? Exasperated guys consume governments. Three, is it epigamma psychographs? Or four, eloquent girls carry guitars? What does EGCG stand for? <laughs> I thought the elephant girls. No, eloquent, eloquent, dainty, poised. Wow. I learned a lot from that. EGCG, guys. All right, retro means at the back. Ortho is mouth. Oh, ortho is mouth. Oh, I think ortho is straight, but we can, uh, we can talk about that later. EGCG, does it stand for epigallocata? So this one is also inspired by... Uh, Eric Scott's uh, Tea Science Tuesdays. Check out those videos. Uh, maybe ping him on social media and say, hey, uh, I think he was going to start them up again. So bug him about it. It's fun. I don't know if he has the time, but you know, he'll um, hopefully I don't make him mad. So we got some guesses for one coming in. We got some guesses for three. And the correct answer is one. Way to go, everybody. Igor, Ooh. good guess. Way to put yourself out there and guess. Nice. And uh, time signature likes four. Elegant girls carry, eloquent girls carry guitars. I like it better too. Let's head on to the next question. I have notes about these two so I can share interesting tidbits with you. Ooh, here we go. The Chinese term, the Chinese tea term, huigan, with characters for your reference, means one, persistent bitterness. Is it two? Lingering astringency. Three, pleasant aftertaste. Literally, returning sweet. Or four, profound aroma. Let's see what Josh said. I think one, because a catechin is definitely a tea substance. Mm, good one. <laughs> Igor, that's right. Way to go, Igor, putting yourself out there. All right, guys. The Chinese tea term, huigan. Huigan. I got a little note for after that. I'm just checking my notes. I watched a, an episode about Huegan, which is where I got all these great questions. You still have a little bit of time, folks, but it is running out. So make sure you get your answers in soon about what the Chinese tea term Huegan means. It's a persistent bitterness, lingering astringency, lots of guesses coming in for three, pleasant aftertaste, literally returning sweet. Oh, look at them rolling in. Or is it four, profound aroma? I have a feeling we may have a sweep here. Get your answers in. Lolo at the last minute with a, another vote for answer number three. We have a sweep. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Way to go, guys. Playdown does indeed return pleasant aftertaste. Literally return sweet or returning sweet. Way to go, guys. Next question. This is totally out of left field. It's another one of my favorite YouTubers. This is out of left field though, not so related to tea, except I kind of pulled it in at the last minute. Which of the following is a cactus? Is it Coffea arabica? Is it Opuntia rufudi, rufu, <laughs> rufida? Is it three, Camellia sinensis? Or is it four, Aspalathus linearis? Woo! All right, guys, this is a weird one coming at you from uh, a YouTube channel I love. I gotta warn you up front though, you know who it is. Yes. I gotta warn you up front because the, it, the channel is, it's, uh, I don't wanna say it's full of profanity, but it, but it is, it's got, lots of prof <laughs> it's got lots of profanity in it. It is crime pays, but botany doesn't. If you're into plants and uh, nature and understanding more about how plants work and how fascinating plants can be, check out that channel. This is totally unpromoted, obviously, that that guy has tons of subscribers because his videos are hilarious and educational and just fun. So which of the following is a cactus? Is it Coffea arabica? Is it Opuntia rufida? Is it Camellia sinensis? And the answer is Opuntia rufida. Three of you guys oh. got it. Way for guessing, everybody. Um, I'll tell you what they are. Too. Coffee is the coffee plant. Everybody knows Camellia sinensis. And Aspalathus linearis is rooibos tea. So I kind of made it about tea and herbal tea just by putting some interesting answers in. And Opuntia rufida is a uh, 
blind prickly pear if you're interested in which cactus it is. I don't have a picture of it to show you. I'm trying to get more interactive with these. We're on to the last question. Qianliang Cha, what we're drinking today, roughly translates to one thousand leaves tea, two thousand pound tea, three sixteen kingdom tea, or four monkey pick tea. Why do you look at me? Tell you later. Oh. All right, guys, plenty of time to answer this one. I bleeping love mother bleeping profanity for bleep six. Time signature is uh, <laughs> sharing us. So you'll love that if you're into plants. That channel is hilarious. And um, everybody's saying hello. Tricky. Yes, I was really tricky with these random ones. So Qian Yang Cha, folks, does it mean thousand leaves tea, thousand pound tea, 16 kingdoms tea, or monkey pick tea? Nice. All right, folks, you got a little bit of time left. This is our wrap up question. So, oh, I see. Here we go. Way to go. Um, Cindy and Josh get the right answer. And everybody took great guesses. Those are awesome. I love everybody who picked monkey pick tea. High five. And um, 16 Kingdom tea was funny because it's Tian Liang. It's an old era. I don't know if I said it right, but anyway, it's supposed to be some kind of old era. So guys, you did great. Josh at the top of the leaderboard with five correct answers. That's what the, happens when you're the early bird. When you show up on time, you win tea trivia. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Simmerji, you came in with four. Time signature four. Way to go, guys. Max three, Lolo three, Cindy three, Igor one. It doesn't matter if you got zero. It doesn't matter if you got 10 right answers out of five. You're a winner in my book. You did great. We had fun. This is tea trivia. Now it's time oh. <laughs> to expose my yawning wife. <laughs> Watch our latest video. You'll see more of that. It's hilarious this and scene fun. This is so comfy. <laughs> we should have stuck with that terrible sofa we used to sit on. It hurt your back so much there was no way you could possibly yawn. Right. I wasn't thinking. What do you mean by 16 kingdom? I think I figured that out. Mm, it's really, it's only it's really possible to come at that through opinion translation app. Those are two, yeah, those are two uh, totally, totally different, different, different characters. character, different pronunciation. I would have never yeah. think of that if you didn't give me a strong hint. Okay, since we're talking, since mm -hmm. the whole point of this is um, about language and understanding and confusion, I want to explain what, what happened with Qian Liang Cha and uh, Qian Liang, which is nothing. So well, for, you pronounce that pretty good. Yeah, because I saw the tones. When I, so I, when I searched up, because I wanted to see the meaning. So Josh mentioned that I think Liang is a unit of weight. That's right. So that's why my question said roughly. It's not really a pound. It's an, it's a, it's an historic unit of weight that doesn't really have a, like, I don't know what it is. It has mm. a measure, but it's It changes probably, throughout time. Yeah, it's probably rough. So it's some measure of weight. So we use pound. Can we use kg? Can we use jing? I don't think you should shake this. Anyway, so, so when I typed it into my app, um, a different version of qian, uh, instead of, I don't know how to say it for the T. Can you give us the right tones? Qian liang cha. Mm. So there's the right tones for qian liang cha, but I also saw when I just type it in, there's no tones. So it also gave me qian liang, which is the, uh, which are two completely different characters. So for me and you, you might think, oh, that's pretty similar because it's Q-I-A-N, uh, L-I-A-N-G. Pretty similar, right? No, not to her. That's qian, not qian. I don't know if it was one, mm -hmm, I missed mm -hmm. it. No, so those are completely, completely, completely different sounds. Okay, so that's, I think it's, a, at least if you're interested in learning Chinese, which I am, really, really, really slowly interested in learning. It's interesting to note that those subtle differences to us are not subtle for Chinese speakers. Those are major differences in the words. So that's why I had to kind of nudge, nudge, and then... And I'm telling you, if you ask a, anybody, a, a Chinese who is not into history, like which dynasty is that? He, it's not even might, a dynasty, right? It's an obscure... Like, uh, it meet, is a, is it? a really short one, 16 right. uh, kingdoms, kingdoms yeah. just to say how chaotic that time is. Mm, so mm. many people might not know that. All right, guys. So that wraps up tea trivia. That was amazing. You guys all did so great. Uh, again, Josh, congratulations and thanks for mm. all the uh, tidbits of info about the words and stuff we're throwing down. That's what we're all about here, having fun, a little bit of learning, mostly just goofing around and having fun, or maybe the opposite if, if that's how you like to look at it. I don't know. Mm. All right, so 
Um, let's dive in to uh, T classification in theory and practice. I'm gonna make, uh, uh, see if I missed any notes. Mm. Well, I could talk about theanine and, uh, and uh, glutamate and uh, stuff like that, but that's not really the point of today's discussion. <laughs> I took tons of notes when I was watching Eric's video. It was so interesting because right. the gallate um, tanning is, which is something in tea, it chops that gallate off of the ECGC, which, uh, which does something to the tea. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Watch Tea Science Tuesday if you want to know more about it. Cause he, uh, it's really hard for me. Like once you start to have those uh, Latin originated words there. Or chemistry my, words. Those yeah, are then my brain words. is just doom, shut down. Yeah. I was like, what? Zzz, what? That, that was what caused the yawn, guys. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, let's. Oh, you got that there? I have it here too. Sorry. I oh, that's be great. Quicker. That's great because I lost my notes on my. Oh, really? I have them here. Really? If you, yeah, I have them with your notes. So I'm going to bring oh, up the, uh, the Chinese version for you and we'll just start talking about the uh, T classification. Mm. If you're, oh, First of all, we got to warm it up. Guys, the link to this document is down below. Okay, there's a PDF, you can grab it. And I'll just tell you, there's page numbers in the PDF. So mm -hmm. I will give you both the page number of the PDF we're on, which is 336, 336 is the one that's written on the PDF. Mm -hmm. And if you're just using the PDF page number, we're on page nine of the PDF, section three, the basis for classifying refined teas. All right, mm -hmm. so if you want to read along, uh, I encourage it. You'll get more out of it, I think, because sometimes we're going to zoom in on specific sentences. And every now and then I might pull up the document and show you something cool. Okay, so uh, yes. today is an interesting uh, section. It talks about, in English, it translated as refined tea, mm. uh, which I don't know that what refined tea would mean to you, but it actually means in Chinese like further processed tea, like those pressed mm. tea, say those poor cake talk about uh, uh, jasmine green tea, mm. uh, which category does it belong to? So uh, we call that zai jia gong cha, uh, means further processed tea, mm -hmm. or uh, literally like again processed. So it means it has more uh, steps after it's done. And um, would you call that a refined? Tea. I feel no, refined. I was going to take note. I, I didn't right. want to interrupt you, but I wanted to tell you my impression. When I first read it, I was like, okay, probably a little bit more about finished, like finished tea. I feel like it's then more I, about sifting. Then I as refined. I read it, right. I was like, oh, he means scented and blended tea. Like how to refine a, re a finished tea into a scented and blended, because that mm. was the first thing you talked about. Then he bring out pressed and I start to get a little confused and I didn't, I kind of, yeah, it took me a while to figure it out, but I had to get it from reading in in context and I'm not sure I landed on it fully, but eventually did. And then when you said, what was the better way to look at it? Oh, um, post-process. Post I was like, oh, okay. So anything process. you do with tea after it's done, then I was like, okay, that includes pressing, right? Mm -hmm. Includes scenting with flowers. Scenting and stuff. So I just uh, somehow feel like uh, refine give me that sifting thing, which is mm. already done at yep. this phase kind of thing. So it kind of, I was like, uh, not quite sure if uh, what an uh, English speaker would understand refined it might be different. Anyways. Time Signature throws out like refined carbs, which I think is similar. It's like oh. carbs that are worked on, I think. I'm not sure what refined carbs are, but... If they're post-processed to do something funky to them, I guess it's pretty similar. Okay, okay, okay. See, there. I have to say the translator is very uh, uh, pro. <laughs> sometimes mm. it's too pro, sometimes I have problem. I want to make sure that I'm just not criticizing or something that I just didn't fully understand. Again, my English is limited. Mm. So you guys can always tell me, okay, that is yeah. perfect. That's even though maybe not everyday use, but that's the meaning that is properly used. Josh, Josh actually mentioned something mm -hmm. very interesting too, that refined can also mean classy and well-mannered. Right. And I also right. went in with that when I first read it. Yes. Could it mean that? I yes. knew it would be, because because of what we're doing, I was a little bit open-minded, but like, you're right. A, a reader could have walked into it with that and then been sort of pushed out as it was further explained too, pushed back right, to the correct right. So yeah, the clarification definitely helps. Yeah. 
And um, good one, Josh. Thank you. Guys, throw stuff in like that. It's excellent. Yeah, it's great for me to learn like mm. what actually you guys are reading mm. too. So um, it's a very interesting topic because I remember uh, 15, 20 years ago when I first learned TM, uh, we always uh, talk about uh, uh, what are Chinese tea types, uh, six different types of tea and post-processed tea, which uh, if you count it's like a 70 category thing and this is what it is to talk about ah. yeah we don't emphasize on uh, just the six tea type uh, that at least at that time we always talk about uh, china has a six tea type and post processed tea ah. so we actually don't just say oh jasmine green tea is green tea but in his system as you read he he mentioned based on the finished product with the character uh, the character mm. of the uh the character and the quality of the tea if it uh, stays with its original uh, tea product it belongs to that category for example jasmine green tea is mm. a green tea with a jasmine scented as unique process then become jasmine green tea. Mm -hmm. So to categorize that, you put that under green tea because right. it's a tasting uh, profile, it's quality, it's character still remain mainly in the green tea pro uh, right. green tea category, right. even though there's some changes. Right. It's yeah. a mi pretty minor change in terms of the actual tea, the base tea. Yes. Uh -huh. And that's uh, pretty much what his thesis is in this part and he uses some example for example uh, jasmine green tea or any like a uh, uh, post of, like a press dark tea like a fujuan or say qian liang cha those are still mm. dark tea even though it's a press or right. um, uh, like a uh, uh, shen puar he point out like a shen puar is the uh, Shai Qing Lu Cha, the sun dried uh, green tea. So it's uh, mm. so even though it's pressed, its quality, its tasting profile, its character still remains close to its uh, green tea category. So if you want to categorize that, uh, you can uh, put that as a, still a green tea, while mm. the Shu Puar belongs to dark tea because it's mm. a, a pouting and the pressing process have changed greatly of its taste, its character, and its quality, so it belongs closer to dark tea. Mm. So that's how he uh, categorized those teas that went through an extra step after it's done. Right. I wanted to jump over. I wonder if we should uh, talk about the use of the word straight and they, he even put it in quotes. I don't know if maybe he, when he ah. translated it, felt a little uncomfy with the translation. So that's very interesting. I, I didn't know there was straight tea. So how we do this process? After learn, learn from like a two, three weeks ago, we do, I read Chinese, he read English. He tells yeah. me what he understands, rephrase that for me in a more like mm -hmm. a common way. And when he talked about straight tea, I was like, what, what does straight tea mean? And then I noted, oh, he put a straight in the bracket. So in Chinese, we call that mao cha. Yeah, but which is not what I got from it, right? If you remember mm. when, I, when you asked me, so let me just show them that because mm. that's a pretty interesting. So right there yes. in the highlight, we've got the straight, straight tea. And I thought he meant because he had, um, later he starts to talk about scented tea. So I kind of went back and I'm like, oh, maybe he means unscented tea. Right, so straight not, up a tea, no, not no post process, yeah. right? Straight tea is what I. Oh, okay, that's what he means. I had, I would, and I would have thought that through the whole read if we didn't, if you, you didn't tell me, no, that's mao cha, mm. right? Which was really yeah. uh, interesting. So, uh, I feel like I dropped you. No, no, no. I'm just thinking. Mm. Like uh, I don't know why it would be translated as mao cha. So mao. Uh, if you just uh, hear this, uh, it's a tea term. First, it's a tea term. Mm. Okay, we're gonna explain later. But first, if we separate these two characters, Mao means uh, you can mean hairy or hair or anything. Uh, right. It doesn't really use as a straight as much. Anyways, so uh, and sometimes we in this time uh, in this term, why we call that Mao Cha? Mao also means something that is uh, uh, finished but not fully finished, which means like the, the bone structure, everything is there, but it's not quite done. Mm -hmm. Like if you buy a new, uh, 
uh, you guys probably don't buy a house like that. We could buy a house called Mao Pi Fang, which means all the concrete, everything is there. But it's just a concrete with its right. shapes and stuff. You got to buy the kitchen. You got to yeah. fit in the kitchen, fit in the stuff, put it in the pipe and stuff like that. Yeah, we don't have that exact model, okay, okay. but people can buy that before mm. it's built and order that up. Yeah, so, so that means it's just mm. a, the bone structure, the most of the right. stuff are there, but it's not quite done. And that's the meaning used here in Mao Cha, mm -hmm. which is um, a meaning as a Phil was... <laughs> She yesterday... gave us a great a great metaphor. She gave us a food mm. metaphor, which I think further is further helpful because the house at no point can you eat it um, or drink it. So she used one like it's like uh, she's like because uh, I ha I told her what I thought Mao Cha was. She's like that's not quite right. It's a little off, right? I just I said something like oh it's unfinished tea, and she's like well mm. not really. It's uh, think of it like creme brulee with no glaze yet. It's totally edible, but it's not finished like so the not finished wasn't wrong but it's important mm -hmm. to capture the fact that it's done enough to consume right done enough yeah to eat. yeah you yeah. have the essence of a, a creme brulee that uh, mm -hmm. uh custard right yeah. but so that glaze is a important part of it right that kind of thing and i think fernanda said a non-polished tea perhaps that's also good it has that feeling too it does yeah so uh let me just um uh, uh come back to the tea world of uh, what a Mao Cha would mean and maybe mm. you guys can help out and eventually come up with an even better word. Uh, so what would be a Mao Cha? Um, some people hear that... What? No time signature like a skeletal structure? <laughs> he's, he's probably thinking about the dead bodies in the basement now if he watched that video. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like she likes those metaphors. But you got it. I think after she explained the... Um, Mao Pi Cha, Mao Pi whatever, the unfinished Mao house. Mao Pi Fang, yeah. Mao Pi Fang, right? The unfinished house. You can get the idea of the bones, the structure. Mm. The outside is all there, but the, the dressing, the polish, as Fernanda put mm. it, is not on it yet. Yes. And so, uh, oh, Cindy, yes. Mm. So Mao in Mao Cha is the same character as the one in Mao Xie. Never made that connection before. Yeah, because they use differently. Uh, yes. Wow, I'm really proud of you. Like, uh, I like, uh, it's really, I wouldn't even think of that because right. the meaning is uh, far and uh, but what, stuff. But what is the meaning of Mao Xie? Harry. Oh, Harry, Harry Crab, right? Mm. Harry Crab, right. Mm. So, right, but it's same character, different meaning, huh? Yes. Mm. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you know, the, the, the crab legs are always hairy. Anyways. <laughs> what? Raise your hand if you've ever seen a crab with hairy legs. They have an exoskeleton. How can they have oh. hair? Of course. Okay, okay. Not a Western big lobster, that kind of. The Chinese crab. The yeah, Chinese... we have crabs too. You have they that? still they have, have exoskeleton. Hair. Oh, they have hair. They have a lot of hair on their legs. It's probably a parasite. No. They have no. an exoskeleton, I'm telling you. We're gonna... I'm telling okay. you there's a hair. I'm going to put a uh, picture. We're, on, we're off no, topic, on... but we're going to settle this. <laughs> we're coming back. Stay tuned on our... <laughs> get on to our Discord. Okay, and we'll settle this hairy crab leg thing because uh, I'm sure it's seaweed growing on their shell. An exoskeleton can't have hair. Oh, but Ar Araka, Araka, Fernanda says spiders can have hair, so maybe I'm burnt here. Oh, see? But they're not arachnoids, right? They're different, I think. I don't know. I might be in trouble. Okay, let's move on. This is not tea, tea related. This is uh, hairy crab, <laughs> mouse seer related, okay? Here we go. Mao Cha is not yet supposed to be drunk. No, no, you can drink it. Continue. Okay, carry on. Let's, uh, continue. Thank you, Lolo, for bringing yes, us back to thanks. tea country. <laughs> so we have, irrelevant. We have left the ocean and returned to the jungle. Mm. So mm. what is Mao Cha? Most people hear that I, uh, based on the information I receive and people I talk to in uh, North America, they seem to think Mao Cha is related to Shen Pu or Pu came down. Mm. It's not. Mao Cha is mm. a very general term to describe general. that state of tea. Mm -hmm. And it can be used in any tea to mean that a specific state. So what is that state? What is a puar mao cha? It means a shen puar that is dried, they're loose leaf dried, not yet pressed into bean or cake. So that's mao cha. Don't go back to the crabs. Don't go back oh, okay, to the crabs. Okay, okay. Let me crab... finish this session and I, I want to No, no, we're not going time. back. We're not going back. But it's a great comment, but we're not going okay. back. Okay. So, um, 
So that's the Puer Mao Cha. If we talk about Puer Mao Cha, that usually means a Shen Puer loose leaf. It's dried. It's ready to be drink. You can drink that, no problem. It's not pressed.、Mm. But after the pressed,、uh, and also not sifted. So after the sifting and press, you taste it again. There is a change to the taste. Not as huge as a fresh leaf to dry, but there's still changes.、Um, you know, black tea based on its process, certain teas finish quite straight, and certain teas might have a second roast. Before the second roast and sifting, that kind of ready to drink. That is ninety percent of what we're tasting. Mm. Mm. That's Mao Cha. And then you have oolong or green tea. You might not、uh, oolong. We hear Mao Cha a lot too because when it's Mao Cha, it's almost a green oolong. So, a certain point when the green oolong starts, besides you know it's innovative, it also saves a lot of work of roasting. Okay, get the product out to the market ASAP. And closer to green tea, we talk about this more in、uh, Chara Magazine.、Uh, mm. But here, just want to glaze over it. Uh, so skipping certain re-roasting, drying、uh, process, it gets the tea to the market quick. So early times, a lot of uh, uh, green oolong in early times is basically Mao Cha sifted and sell for、mm. speed and something new. Uh, but uh, for a、uh, more traditional classic style of oolong tea,、uh, the Mao Cha is more those green ones, and、uh, then you have to roast it, you have to、um, sift it, and all that. And sometimes, actually, a lot of times, tea producers are not gonna. Share with regular regular people like tea lovers. Just oh, this is my Mao Cha. Only、uh, usually is、uh, we will taste、uh, Mao Cha only in professional buying because they、right. want to make sure you understand what you're tasting. Because in Wulong Mao Cha and finished tea, especially when we talk about like rock tea or even Tie Guanyin, anything that go classic ways, there's a huge change in profile. You tasted.、Uh, I was exactly going to mention Ping He,、mm. tasting the Baya Tilan Mao Cha, and then、That's、tasting、finished. the like nine or ten different roasts、mm. when your mom was working with the roaster. So check out、uh, there's an article about that in in also in Chao Ran where we where her pros we explain her process of working with the roaster was super. But you didn't believe that's the tea that you taste. That's right. That's the point of this discussion. Is I had the Baya Tilan Mao Cha. I asked, "What is this?" And they're like, "That's Baya Tilan." And I'm like, "No, no. Where's my croissant?" And we drank a lot of variations of light roast and this stuff, and no croissant, no croissant, no croissant, no croissant, no croissant. I was devastated, devastated.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your mom talked to the guy all day long. We drank like nine or twelve different roasts. The next, he stayed up all night. He made a batch. Bam! Croissant in the cup.、It、was wonderful. It's on our website. It's amazing. Okay, sorry, I'm. I didn't mean、yeah. to go overly salesy, but the the profound change. I guess what we're focusing on here today、mm. is really profound change in、uh, tasting profile, and it was a great exercise for me too because there are links.、Mm. They are there. You just gotta be ta- you gotta、right. pay attention and taste for them. It's、yeah. really interesting. It's more、uh, yeah. common when we go to we areas. We would、mm. go there and taste, and we taste uh,、mm. uh, more of a Mao Cha, Wei Shan Mao Cha.、Mm. And、uh, you know, during the tea season, there's lots of people visiting tea region. Some are professional people. Some are just tea lover traveling and trying tea. So a lot of times, you know, we sit there, and there are new people who just.、Uh, Uh, while、uh, stopping by, and they're just tea lovers、uh, or friends of the producers. So it would, in general, if they ask, "How is this year tea not out?" So if they taste anything,、right. it tastes the previous year's tea.、Uh, and once they're gone, when we're、uh, when we're、um, uh, uh, we come back to Mao Cha tasting again, they really avoid giving people Mao Cha because they. It's so big difference.、Mm. There's a first no point, second no、uh, could be misleading. There are people who actually just like the Mao Cha flavor, which is totally fine. They just like that, and after that they pre-order all that tea, and when it come out, it was like 
this has nothing to do with、uh, what I tasted. Right, right. They will get get in trouble, kind of a quarrel,、right. unnecessary trouble. So they just don't even do that unless you are a Pro. professional buyer knows what you're doing. What are you、uh, looking for? So. That's oolong mao cha. We talk a lot. Yeah, check out、uh, Cindy's、right. question about oolong mao cha too. So it's I think because、mm. it's a little bit interesting question. So there is a such thing. She asks. So there is a such thing as oolongs that have never been roasted or rolled. So that's an interesting question because the cilan was not yet roasted, but it was.、Uh, that's a very good、shape. question. And、uh, right. a while ago, I made a video talking about. I'm not sure how to say this in English. Great, because the English,、uh, the English in terms of tea process in turn is, I think, bad. Roasted. What exactly does it mean?、Mm, right. Good point. You know point, what I mean. Like people talk about roasted, is thinking about the dark oolong or stuff like that. But、uh, every oolong tea, when they're drying, it still apply a certain、mm-hmm. high heat, relatively high heat for drying. So、mm. is that just a drying, or can I also call that roasted? Right. You know, it's almost、uh, very similar. It's a little something I wasn't quite sure. So, and in terms of a rolled, a similar thing. Oolong all have is shaping process. Right. How much rolled is rolled? You look at a、uh, like a Wu Yan Cha or Feng Huang Dan Cong. They're straight. They are also has the roll process, but they're not rolled as tight. Compared、mm-hmm. to Tie Guan Yin or High Mountain Oolong or those、mm-hmm. Taiwanese Oolong,、mm-hmm. there, in terms of rolling, there are still different ways of doing that. Right.、Um, and that's one of the reason I try not to overly talking about tea processing with people who've never see that or never.、Uh, I think it's very important to be there. It's, It's like I'm trying to teach somebody swimming through talking. Right. It's kind of a it yeah, seem to make sense, but it、That's、really depends. That's a great metaphor. On, you know, you have to be there to see、yes. it, so I can really explain. I think the, the essence of her question is in her second question: is that is that mao cha considered an oolong even before processing? I think there we have to back、right. up and remember the key point was eighty to ninety percent done. So a mao cha is. Always in a category、right. squarely. It's almost done. So、mm-hmm. yes, it is an oolong mao cha. It's not.、Mm-hmm. It can't be anything else now. It's an oolong.、Mm-hmm. Uh, or if it's a shempuar mao cha, it will never be anything but shempuar. It is eighty to ninety percent done. That's right. So that's just a for our for the level of just enjoying tea. It's good to know a little bit about what mao cha is, and that's a good thing to keep in mind. You know, eighty to ninety percent done tea,、mm. drinkable. But、mm. but like you said, not caught you.、Mm. It might not be. It really, if you wonder about oolong mao cha, tastes like really similar to green oolong.、Mm. Really similar. Not saying all the green oolong are mao cha, but just in terms of the tasting profile, they're really similar.、Mm-hmm. Good one. Green tea used to have certain teas have mao cha. They kick out that re、uh, re roasting or stuff kind of process for faster production too. So now if you talk about the green tea. And the stuff is almost of one stuff done.、Mm. Right, right. That's a good point. So I'm not sure. If it, I'm not sure if it was clear. So I'll restate it. So green tea、oh. used to have a really defined mao cha phase, and it's mostly kicked out now, so they can、yeah. get to market. That's probably because we sh- every tea once it's finished, they need time to rest.、Mm. Then you re roast it for the better lock down the process,、mm. and、uh, certain of our yellow and. Green teas we produce with the producer we man mandate that step. I'm guessing Guju Zasun, yes. Yes. You know why I guess that, guys? You can Just, taste the difference. You can taste it, but do you remember the Guju Zasun we found from 2015 the other day? Oh yeah. That's why I guess that because we grabbed a 2015 green tea. Okay, so usually two to three years. And we always say, if you know, the better their process, the longer they'll last. That tea was so good, I couldn't believe how rich and how preserved, preserved the mouthfeel was. Well. Yeah, so there's a difference. So that longer extra step, that let it rest and then give it that re-roast is really killer.、Mm. Um, okay, just one. Anyways, and probably the. I wonder about the aged one I had. Was that also proper done? Because that aged really well. If you saw the video about oh. Out yet, right? <laughs> Now you know what's coming. Spoiler alert! 
All right. So if you're okay. look, if you're here, good for you. You got a little spoiler about a really cool video coming out. Right. No, I'm not saying anything else. Oh, that's okay. Check how many people. Okay, that's good. <laughs> hey, Dominique, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the live cast. And so that was what we wanted to talk about, Maocha. That's about it. Mm -hmm. I want to just bring back to the document here. I'm going to come back. Mm -hmm. I just want to show them the last paragraph. I just love this guy, right? Because mm -hmm. it's so academic. The, the beginning of the section, right? Section three, end of the first paragraph. This is what he's saying. If you, you want to read the rest of the section, go ahead. But this is what he's saying. You can stop here and jump to the next section. Refined T's constitute minor groups, not independent major categories, period. Mm -hmm. All right. I just wanted to throw that out because I just love that. I highlighted it because I could tell right away right. this is the thesis of this section. And I like that. Mm. I'll go back to your version here so you can mm, see what's going you. on. You are so welcome. Oh. Okay, next one is when he talk about uh, getting rid of the rankness now by uh, withering. Mm. So that what in so Chinese, it means shai qing. Shai means sun dry. Qing means the green leaves, the tea leaves. So shai qing doesn't necessarily, because uh, in this uh, article, in this uh, translation, any kilgreen he translated as uh, get a rid, getting rid of the redness smell, which is almost perfect translation mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what kilgreen is. Mm -hmm. But uh, so if you do that, you feel like, okay, this is a withering kilgreen kind of a process, which is not. Chinese kilgreen, we talk about mm -hmm. this in China tea book. Chinese are talking about four different types of green tea. They're not just the kilgreen. It's a kill green and drying combination. So shai qi, not uh, sun dry kill green, doesn't mean mm. it's a sun dry literary for kill green. They still have a kill green, it's the drying process that mm. uses sun. Right. So uh, just want to clarify, and that's usually how uh, Yunnan puer are processed. They have that uh, sun dried process. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, because that was an interesting um, part, right? Where with the um, I let me find it. Yeah, teas that have lost some of their rankness in the withering process. Yeah. Withering is really um, and withering nowadays when we use that different. we talk about yeah. uh, like a white tea has a withering, oolong has a withering, black mm. has a withering, Darjeeling has that hard wither, wither right? So right. it has a really so different meaning now yes. than back yes. in the seventies. Mm. So that was an important one. I wanted to point out that Lolo shares an interesting um, uh, point here. He has a tea that does several steps of low temperature baking using some new tech, infrared baking. So um, direct application of radiant heat, I guess, infrared baking. That sounds so interesting. Mm. It's an interesting topic because in baking, we really love the uh, traditional bake, right? The really... Uh, Mm -hmm. the uh, charcoal roast still but a little bit mm -hmm. off topic but cool me a little off topic Lolo perfect question love it uh, the mm -hmm. creme brulee lay note on that document is also a helpful analogy right that's why I wrote it because I just loved it thanks for uh, what? thanks for noticing Cindy had seen it when it was up <laughs> so um, infrared yeah infrared so it's like uh, I don't know how they do it but in, in con conceptually it just means like those lamps that make you warm radiant heat you know mm. it's really a, it's pure heat with no um you know is because heat is really just light that that's interesting okay no, i don't want to go too much to uh, the, the the chinese stuff that's, that's what that's we like, do wanna, that's, 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 that's everybody's like what <laughs> that's what we do <laughs> right no, just kidding, but just kidding. we feel like we have been doing some uh, experiment with teas uh, every time we're in the tea regions mm. and in chinese we have a concept of a uh, young fire and in uh, young heat and in heat electricity uh -huh. without real fire right. even though it's a heat it's considered it's a more in heat so it's, ying is cooling just so people know right oh, young right. is young is hot ying is cool for the purpose of yes. just understanding this what you're yes. about to say well, I think they when that, you right. see the real fire the more Campfire. traditional style right. of fire charcoal those kind of thing is more Gas young stove. fire yes young heat yes mm. so there tend to be an interesting tasting difference it's not just temperature if you try to control mm. the temperature at a certain level 
the tastes are s slightly different. So mm. I'm, I don't think I ever had infrared red baking, but I'm really curious. Me too, because infrared is the essence of heat. So I don't know where I would put it in mm. that spectrum, right in the yin or the yang heat. Mm. It's um, and and I wondered further. So radiant, I've seen radiant heaters. Okay, this is a weird one. In Calgary, on their LRT, they have an, an outdoor metro in Calgary where it can uh. easily be minus 30. Right. So that was my first encounter with radiant heaters. I was walking along in the metro and I passed under one of those and you instantly feel warm right, right. in a weird way. The, yeah, that's my the thought air is that. not warm. The air is not warm, but when mm. the infrared radiation hits your skin, mm. it's converted into heat mm. and you feel that and you're like, oh, so I walked through it and then I was like, dun, 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 back up and get back in it because it's minus 30 out. But it's, but it was made with gas. Oh. They used natural gas to generate that in a tube and then reflect it out. I don't know how they did it. So I wonder if you'd use like a light bulb. So at a pizza place, you also see yeah. they use light bulb, red light bulb to generate that. And they used gas, so I wonder if it still has that yin yang. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, one of our uh, our Feng Huang Danzong producer, they used the electricity heater for they they were building the new factory and everything. Used the electricity heater for like one two years, and the result is not good. They swap the whole equipment for a uh, real wood heater. Let that sink in for a bit. That's not like a ten dollar pullout. That's a pretty expensive retrofit, right? So mm. it was really impacting their product, mm. their end result. All right, so um, I think the last word in the document, I'm gonna fly back over. Mm. I'm gonna fly back over. I'm gonna scroll up a bit, guys, just cause Cindy called it out. I'll just let you see it again for anybody who might've missed it. Mao Cha, right? Think of creme brulee with no glaze. Edible, not finished. Okay, that's another way. 80, 90% finished tea, another great sort of takeaway. There was one more word that threw me off big time, which is this flower word here. Mm. Don't know why I didn't highlight it. Let's highlight it. Good. Flower, okay? Um, and I think the Chinese, I have it on the side here, right? I think that was fu hua, which is flowering. Fa hua. Fa hua, sorry. It's written fa hua. I said fu, my bad. Fa hua, flowering, a term. So that's an interesting Your note term. is very concise and great. Yeah, it's a term basically, uh, yeah, flowering. It's now mostly used with Fujuan, but it's a dark tea step kind of thing. Yes, Part it's of mostly plant, talk. So yeah. If you talk about uh, Fujuan, you will hear that a lot of Fahua means getting that uh, gold flower there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the process. Here, even though it's used to describe the Shupua process, it's more talking about uh, the Shupua pressing process. So again, in the 70s uh, era, there's... Uh, like uh, the Shufuar process it was still relatively new and it was learned from various different dark tea process. That's why the turns are still, you know, everywhere. They're using those and... Yeah, yeah. so that was the last part, mm -hmm. uh, the last sort of thing that I tripped on. And I actually didn't, I never figured out what he meant by that. Um, so I needed help. I just mm -hmm. kind of, you know how it is, right? Sometimes if you don't understand one little piece, you just skip it and you kind of, ah, I got the gist. I got most of it. Um, but now you guys have all of it. Um, thanks to you. <laughs> and, uh, and time signature says made with gas. So they dispelled the wind to create heat. And yes, we use that technique in camp. We use that <laughs> technique in Canada a lot to stay warm, which I believe we stole from the Vikings. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's a Viking technique. So um, dispelling wind to stay warm always works. So that wraps up section three, the basis, the basis for classifying refined tea mm -hmm. or um, post-processed tea, mm -hmm. I think is how we ended up saying it. Mm -hmm. And um, stuff I wanna talk about a little bit. Um, I don't, I don't know. I want to talk about my little thing I did with Sue. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be, uh, if it's going to be on YouTube, but I think it might be. So if you missed it, don't mm -hmm. worry. It might be up on YouTube at some point in time. Um, but if you missed mine, don't worry. She does that every month. I strongly encourage you to check it out. Her guest in May is Luann. <laughs> is Luann. <laughs> no. Panuzo, I hope I didn't butcher her last name. But anyway, author of the great tea blog, uh, The Cup of Life. You can find that at theteacupoflife.com. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, she'll be Sue's guest in May, middle of the month. I think it's, uh, oh, it's it's uh, right after Sunday Tea Book in the middle of May. So whether it's the 15th or the 16th, I can't remember. Look at the middle May, 2 p.m. right after Sunday Tea Book. We're gonna wrap up super quick because I'm gonna jump over and, and join that. So we'll be done 22 minutes earlier on that day. And yeah, so there we go. Uh, anything else I wanted to say? Oh, just wrapping up. Uh, if you're into tea science, check out Eric Scott's uh, Tea Science Tuesday. It's fantastic. If you like plants, check out Crime Pays Botany Doesn't. You even if you don't like plants, check it so out. Fun the guy's to got watch. a thick Chicago accent. It is so funny. I'm not gonna um, do it here, but um, maybe someday if you're good. I can verify that it is a Viking technique. We still use it today, uh, as do we. Very good. I thought you would be able to help me out with that. Thank you, Time Signature MMA, and thank you everybody. Tea trivia was a blast. You guys crushed it. So um, fun. The learning today, the document was so fun, so good. Um, if you like this video, if you got some benefit out of it, mm -hmm. please reach down there right now before you forget. Give us a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel. Click that notification bell so that you'll know whenever we post a new video. I hinted to one earlier. We've got one coming up, it's gonna be super fun. Um, and uh, whenever we go live, whenever we post new video, we do recipes, we do how to brew tea. We do we're in lockdown again. So. Yeah, we're in lockdown, so there'll be a little <laughs> bit less of the travel vlog. So a lot of irrelevant things is um, we're lost in. You guys are welcome for a great session. It wouldn't yes. be a great session without thank all you of you guys. So us. thank you for joining us. And as always, until next time, keep, keep steeping. steeping.